Okay, number 12 on your archaeology review guide uh, shows you a picture of a field with a long line of grass running through it. And it's asking you what you might expect to find under that section of taller grass. So we're going to talk about taller grass that's doing better than grass surrounding it and shorter grass that's not doing as well as other grass around it. And the reason that we're talking about grass here in number 12 is uh, getting at one of the ways that archaeologists come up with a idea for where to look for something. That's something we talked about earlier in our time-lapse video. Um, people had good questions about like, how did they know there was going to be a church there? Or how did they know where to dig to try to find that old church? One of the ways that they can use is by investigating primary sources and looking at what people have written about the thing that they're looking for. Say they're looking for a church or a castle. People may have written about the church and written about the castle, and there may be clues in what they've written about where it could actually be located. That's one thing that archaeologists can do, is look into primary sources, look into things that people wrote about the things they're looking for. Another thing they can do, or another thing they can use is the earth will tell them some stuff too. So that's why we're talking about the grass here because tall, greener, darker, lusher, healthier looking grass, or it could be any vegetation, any, any plants, um, is a signal to an archeologist that something may be beneath that grass that's doing better. This is related again to the time-lapse when we talked about how do archeologists find a grave um, because it's just a hole filled with dirt, surrounded by dirt. Um, and we talked about how any time that you dig a hole and then fill it back in, uh, the dirt that goes in the hole is never going to be as compacted as the dirt surrounding it. So hopefully you can tell the color difference here. We've got um, some darker brown soil. We have this space that has been dug out previously and then filled back in with soil, which is a little bit of a lighter brown here. Um, maybe this soil got filled in by the same person that dug the hole. Maybe they dug a hole and then filled it in, uh, like a grave or something. Or maybe this used to be a moat around a castle, or it used to be a trench, or uh, it was dug and then nature over time filled it back in in the ways that we've already talked about, how soil continuously gets deposited on top of the top layer and things get buried over time. So if you have this situation where someone has dug a hole and then later it's been filled back in, either by another person or just over time, this is going to create good conditions for whatever's trying to grow on top of this area because this is going to keep water in a more consistent way. These plants that grow above where the hole used to be are going to have more consistent water because when it rains, the rain is going to stay longer in this soil that is less compacted then it stays in the soil surrounding. So this is good at holding some water so plants have more consistent watering. That leads to plants that do better. So if an archeologist notices this patch of grass that's doing better than those around it, then the archeologist needs to start asking questions about, well, what do I think this might be? You might start to look at how big is this area that's growing better? Or is it in a shape um, that might give them further indications. If we imagine that we have, whoa, messed up our screen here. One second. Goodness, that was drastic. If we imagine that we are, let's say, in a helicopter and we're flying over this area of grass that we've noticed that's growing better than grass around it, from our bird's eye view, let's imagine that we see something like this. Um, I did these out of order, that doesn't matter, but um, let's say, you know, here is our area where the grass is growing much better than all the other grass around it. Uh, we'll pretend this field is the normal grass. This is the grass doing better than the normal grass. This is the grass doing worse than the normal grass. We'll talk about what's under these areas uh, next. But what's under this area, if I'm an archaeologist and I see all of this, I might assume, well, maybe this used to be a moat. Maybe this was some sort of protective barrier of a castle or, or a building or something. So areas of grass or any plants that are doing better indicates that there used to be a hole, there used to be a trench, there used to be a moat. Anything like that would work for your number 12. A hole, a trench, 
a moat has since been filled in. Number 12 doesn't ask you this, but we'll look at it anyway. The opposite effect, something that makes grass not grow as well is if there are uh, stones underneath it. Um, you may notice this if you drive out in the country, people that have septic tanks, which are made of concrete and are buried just under the surface, um, their grass tends to die above it in the summer um, when it's real hot and not getting much water. And it's, it's the opposite thing happening. This area is not going to hold water very well um, because these stones that are in the soil are gonna help that water get drawn right through it and drain through it and then not be, not be held. So each time it rains, the rain is gonna take longer to drain through this soil than it will through this soil. And then, this is kind of weird, but our sun is so powerful that it can heat things up that are underground. So even though it's going through the soil, these rocks, or like in my other example, a septic tank that's made of concrete, that will heat up and bake the grass from underneath. So you end up being able to see this more during the, the summer months. So if you find an area like this where the plant life isn't doing quite as well, this could be an explanation as to why. There used to be a wall here, or there used to be a castle or a house or any kind of building, something made of stone, and now that stone has been buried underground and it's affecting the things that are growing on top of it. So if we look back at the bird's eye view, get back into our archeologist helicopter, then these random rectangles make a little more sense because I might start guessing, well, I think this was you know, a castle or a house, some sort of building, and they had you know, some sort of outbuilding over here, something else was built out of stone, and then they dug a moat to protect it. This isn't something I can prove yet. This would just be where my thinking would be as I'm in the helicopter. And then I would be thinking, okay, I wanna go down there and I wanna see if I'm right. I wanna start digging. And if I'm not right, I wanna see what, what the answers are, what, what was here. Um, so this is just part of that process. So an archeologist can't look at some grass and prove anything. It's just an indicator, it's a hint, it's a clue saying, hey, look here, you might find something.